Hi, and welcome to theCUBE. I'm Peter Burris, and once again, we're here at Oracle headquarters at the BWIA event uh, to talk to some customers about what they're doing with big data. And today, we've got uh, an esteemed CEO of Infotech, uh, Ali Fouquier Pekek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ali, why don't you pronounce your name for us? My name is Ali, the middle name is Ufuk, means horizon in Turkish, and last name is Peker. Pekka. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you've come a long way from Istanbul, the yeah. Asian side of the Bosphorus, which is it's one of my favorite cities in the world. Thank you very much for coming all the way to the U.S. to talk to us about what's happening with uh, some of the big data implementations going on in Turkey. Now, specifically, you have a company that does spatial or uh, geographic database information. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Infotech? Infotech is a company who's focusing on location-based technologies. Uh, so we provide both the content required, which is the digital maps for these kind of solutions, and also the platforms uh, we, where you serve maps, geocoding services, location-based intelligence services, and different applications like uh, vehicle tracking, like uh, route optimization is served through our platform called Location Box. And we are working on this uh, technology for 17 years with Infotech. Uh, we generally uh, use Oracle technologies. It's a completely red stack solution, uh, the location box. We use database, application server, Oracle hardware. Now, with these new customers, we are also started using Oracle Public Cloud. Now, I, a lot of folks may not know this, but Turkey is actually relatively advanced in the utilization of mobile technology, yes. uh, even relative to places like Sweden and Finland and other countries in Europe that are normally regarded as leaders in mobile. I have to believe that the fact that Turkey and their, your younger population which skews more towards using mobile is that that has an enormous impact on how uh, spatial or geographic or location information changes. Yeah. I got to believe that it's a constant turnover because you are so dependent upon mobile capabilities. Yes, definitely. You know, uh, for example, I, I think that the biggest uh, GSM operator in Turkey has nearly have 45 million subscribers. 45 million. And also any ma mobile technology quickly implemented. We, when people are start moving a lot, then location becomes even more important. You know, instead of people working in the company, they start moving around. They uh, instead of waiting customers, they go to customers. But then you need to understand how many customers they went. So, which means that you need to implement location-based technologies. Both you need to provide more information on maps, and then you need to retrieve more information as reports through uh, map-based solutions. So you're here specifically talking this week about uh, a particular application. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that application? Yes, the application that we'll be talking about is uh, one of the biggest parcel delivery companies in Turkey, with which delivers around more than around half a million uh, d deliveries per, per day. And the interesting thing about this customer is that. You know, spatial information systems are generally used for as a nice-to-have systems. They are not must. For example, when you try to make a branch selection, if you have a spatial technology, it helps a lot. But it's not a must. But if you are doing something like transportation, parcel delivery, or uh, transportation planning, this, in these kind of uh, applications, if you don't use location-based data, you can end up with very difficult solutions, and you can lose a lot of uh, money in the field. So the customer that we are talking about is Aras Cargo, and they have around 3,500 uh, 3, vehicles, uh, more than 10,000 people working. They've got uh, around thousands branch offices. And in Turkey, Turkey addresses change pretty quick. Since we are also producing the map data of Turkey, we know that we, around 5% change happens every quarter. Well, so, well, let me make sure I got that. Five percent of the addresses change every quarter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There is a lot of change because of the continuous construction that I'm talking about. You know, the Istanbul is a uh, city which connects Europe and uh, Asia. Last year, when I came here, there were two connections, two bridges. Now there is three bridges and a tunnel. So because of road construction, because of 
new homes built, and also there's a lot of, there's a culture of changing some si street names, and also some parts of the city is very old, so network becomes very complex to solve it. They would like to split the s streets and give new names. Uh, it creates constant update on the data, which makes the life of parcel delivery company, company is very difficult. And also, it's a very price competitive market, and if you just choose the wrong branch to deliver the parcel, you lose a lot of money. As far as I know, uh, one wrong delivery co costs you the money of four correct deliveries. So, so it's a very important so job the cost to of a wrong delivery eats the profit of four pro correct deliveries. Yes. So yes. there's a real instead, and and for those of you who haven't been in Istanbul, it's an incredibly beautiful and vibrant, and as you said. We, interesting combination of ancient and modern. Right. Uh, and you look at those bridges. I mean, the bridges are 450 feet yeah. above the Bosphorus because they have some very, very large boats that go yeah. through. So this vibrant city is uh, evolving very, very rapidly, very, very quickly. And spatial or location services are crucial to doing that. And how are you working with Eris to ensure that the solution is what Eris needs? Uh, what we did is that we uh, they were using a text-based system, so each branch has specific door numbers and street names to deliver. So what we did, first we converted all the data they got to uh, spatial terms. That is, instead of text-based addresses, we drove the regions of deliveries. Uh, we uh, connect all the regions with the road network, and then we geocoded all the existing addresses. They've got around 12 million uh, distinct customers, some of them are offices, some of them are uh, personal information, so we converted, we uh, clean up that data. And also there's a lot of new data coming in because of internet commerce. So, you know, when you are face to face with a person, you can ask, if you don't understand the address, you can ask nearby things or you can ask corrections, but if it's coming from internet, it's mostly people are get used to free format data. So that data coming in should be also automatically geocoded and which requires some processing of the natural uh, language data. So that's one of the things that we are doing. And also when you make a plan to deliver in each location, you need to make sure that that is delivered on time. So you need to track both the vehicles and also people uh, walking after and also, you need to check the coordinates of the delivery with the planned coordinates from the center. So also, you get some updates from the delivery operation itself. So the basic, the first transformation that we made is that we converted fully text-based system to a spatially enabled system. So uh, let me let me let me press you on that just for one second. So. A fully text-based system means that the, the main key was the address, yeah. and a spatial means the main key is the location. That's correct. And then everything else is an attribute of the location. That's correct. As opposed to everything being an attribute of the address. Yeah, but when you do that, then you, instead of reporting based on cities, whatever, you start reporting on coordinates, right. which is much more easier since generally people can change the names of the streets, but they cannot change the, the coordinates. Uh, global coordinates. And that means that, for example, Ferraris, who needs to do fleet optimization and route optimization, uh, the trucks themselves or the delivery vehicles themselves can then be associated with coordinates as yeah. opposed to addresses. Yes, yes. And also we can check if they are using the correct routes, if they are driving uh, in the correct speeds, uh, behaving correctly, compared to the rules and regulations. It brings a lot, uh, operationally it brings a lot of optimization, but other than that, it also gives a lot of data which you can uh, use for your later playing. So that requires uh, some not inconsequential horsepower. Now today, you're doing a lot of this on at your, lo at your data center, in your location, utilizing, I know, a bunch of Oracle yeah. X data machines. Yes. Uh, how's that going and where do you intend to take it? Yeah, classically, uh, we are a company who are trying to focus on its own IP and engineering. So we would like to offload non-functional requirements to other companies. Basically, since the Oracle is the first company who, who invested on spatial technologies, generally our most of our solutions depends on Oracle technology. First, we of course, we offloaded databases, application servers. Then came Exadata, so we offloaded our uh, hardware requirements to Oracle. 
No, but we are not a company, not, not a hosting company. But uh, since the Oracle database runs best on Oracle hardware, we were doing, uh, we were working as a private cloud for our customers. And some of our customers have mostly use our private cloud, and they have some portions on prem. But now, since Oracle also brings the uh, Oracle Public Cloud, since we would like to also offload our hosting requirements to Oracle, and not just lift and load, we would like to also use other capabilities of Oracle Cloud to enrich our existing solutions. So we moved this difficult customer, since they are using our system as an operational system, not a, just a reporting system, we moved this customer to Oracle Public Cloud and now we are in the migration from our own private data center to Oracle Public Cloud. So possibly we won't, bad news for Oracle, possibly we won't be buying more Oracle database and Oracle hardware. Good news for Oracle that possibly we're gonna move all these customers to Oracle Public Cloud on top of our own platform. But I presume also good news for customers, because it means you'll yes. be able to move faster, provide yeah. a more reliable service, yeah. and ensure that the capabilities that you're promising are more likely to show up when the customer needs them. Yeah, the, the story is that customer, uh, if it's successful, customer doesn't understand if it's on the cloud or in our prem. So it was the case. So they didn't understand if it was an Oracle public cloud or in our own cloud. Just lift and load doesn't bring too much to customer. But for example, when they see that we update more quickly, which is very important because of this 5% change, uh, maintenance is much more easier. They don't require too much person to keep up with the database, updates, things like that. And then we can add other services without doing any updates in our system since the uh, applications that we develop around that cloud also brings more value to the customer, then cloud becomes more valuable to the customer. Not just lift and load brings uh, bring a value to the customer. Excellent. Well, Ali, I want to thank you very much for being here. Uh, Turkey is a vital and vibrant company, good country. Uh, you've done, uh, I, like I said, I've been there a couple times. The CIO community is first rate. Thank you very much for joining us here on theCUBE.